Uh, you want to go over the story idea you've got? I do. And um, I actually call me crazy. I have a PDF form. I have something for you to work with. So we, yeah, we've been um, talking about this short film that'll turn into a feature film that I'm kind of the brainchild of, like a horror concept for me to Laura, for me and Laura to act in. And uh, you, you've like been so generous to say that you would like help us with it and everything. So generous, yes. So, so generous. Uh, and well, I mean, to be honest, bro, there are very few people that I like genuinely like collaborating with. And this stuff takes so much time. And like at the end of the day, I feel like I could count it on one hand of like the people that I actually want to take the time to like develop shit because it gets uh, to a place where like there's stuff, there's only a limited amount of time in the day. And when you're doing so much shit, you're like, I have to dedicate it to like the things that important stuff, me, you know? Yeah. And, but bro, I say this, I've said this like so many times you bring this and Laura brings this energy that's like completely different and so fun. And like that gelled with what we're bringing to the table is like this really cool combination. No, that's, that's great to hear. And like, it's fun to be recognized for like something that, you know, I, I think is kind of unique to put out there. It should be more normalized, but just someone who is not caught up in bullshit and just trying to be real and trying to get the best work out of things. So you know, why not? And you are a busy guy. That's why I say that. But that's why I say we're so appreciative. But um, anyway, so this short film, I just sent to you a, a PDF form of kind of what I got into with it. Um, so benefit for the listeners and the viewers yeah. out there. Yeah. It's like this is kind of a real time form of workshopping something. Yeah. So I like, this podcast is going to be is us going through it and coming up with hopefully hopefully finishing in uh, at least the first draft of this film. No, oh. yeah. what I think is dope is like, there are a lot of people out there who are listening, who have always wanted to do something like a short film. And when, when we were first starting out, something like making a short film felt like this huge, like insurmountable thing, or like this thing that like we were, look, I can only speak from my perspective, but like before I made the first short, I had so much, anxiety going into that process because i'm like who am i like what do i know about like short at that point were you mainly an actor had you written anything before yeah i was mainly an actor i definitely written some stuff but bro i didn't know shit about directing but like this is the whole thing like you have to start somewhere that first short i did was shit this isn't going to be shit but i'm saying for anyone out there who like is thinking about stepping into that first short just go for it because at the end of the day you do so many of them, you get to look back and you're like, holy fuck, I've made some really cool shit and look at my growth. Well, here's this in my, my uh, kind of where I came from on that same note is that I came from, I went to drama school, like an intense acting school pretty quickly without having any background in acting other than feeling like, you know, I, I felt like I was creative. I love moves and I feel like I could be a talented like performer, whatever character actor. And then I didn't really get what I wanted creatively and fulfillment wise out of like acting school and so i was like geez what do i need to do and uh a lot of people were saying like well why not try writing like if nothing else you know even with auditions and stuff you don't necessarily get the most fulfilling acting parts but at least try writing and you can kind of like use your imagination and stuff and maybe it'll even help your acting and then I, so i was able to sign up for a sketch comedy class and when i did the sketch comedy class i was so trepidatious about where do I start? How do I even write a three page sketch? How do I even come up with an idea? Now it seems so obvious. Now it seems like, hey, just look at a Saturday Night Live sketch and literally like intermix like your own idea into that thing. And it became that for me. But my point is, it's super tricky where to start. And even on this thing, it was like, it's, it never stops being that like, where do I start? Um, I think that's just writing in general. That's probably why homework is so tough when you're in English class. But anyway. Sitting down and I found, bro, so I've been doing this thing and then we'll get into the project. But yeah. like over the past week, I've sustained what we talked about last time, which is like the four hours a day. There was one day at home three, yeah. still beating myself up. No, bro. It's like, it's unbelievable. That first week I did 27 hours 
And so every day though, I've been putting in that four hours and here's what I've learned because I used to have, even though I've done a lot of writing, I used to have that feeling of like, oh, it's so hard. You got to be, but bro, here's the thing. There's a wall, right? And every, just being like a human being, if you sit there and start to create and you're like, I'm going to put something out there. I'm going to write something. You just have to stare at the fucking computer screen or like the piece of paper. And if you stare at that shit for long enough and don't get distracted, don't pull out your phone, don't do any of that bullshit. And bro, like the most brilliant idea then comes to you after you move over that wall. That's all it takes. You just got to sit in it. At what point are you mainly seeing that in the four hour experience (laughs) dude i always feel i pretty much feel it at the same points every single time it's like the first for me it's the first 10 minutes and then the half hour mark and then i start getting my stride getting my stride and then it's like after i'm an hour and a half in i split it up into i can't sit down and do a four hour session so i have two two hour sessions but it's usually those three points so it's 10 minutes half hour hour and a half and i know it's coming now it's like it's this you know once you expect it and you go through it enough you're like it's just part of the process when i when i see because you update your instagram a lot with your progress on that which i appreciate i see that i'm like another day dustin for jacob i'm so proud thanks bro slightly i'm like i wonder what what's that a lot of that is like accountability for me you know because i know like if people are seeing it or they expect it or whatever i'm like that's that social pressure you know, you're like genuinely saying it to yourself. It's like advice to yourself too, probably. Yeah. Um, which is amazing. And I'm probably like, I wonder what that would be like for me if I was able to, you know, put aside that much time for myself to do it. I think probably great stuff would come from that. And I will do that at some point. Um, and, uh, and then I, I brought it up to my brother, Vinny, he's a writer and I'm like four hours kind of crazy. Right. And he's like, it's like, well, I brought it up in like four hours. Like you do do that kind of a lot though, right, Vinny? Like, it, cause he's always writing. He's like, yeah. like, he's like, yeah, no, four hours. It's like, you know, a whole morning writing. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a whole morning when you put it that way, it doesn't sound that crazy, but I can, I mean, he has been, cause I've been checking in since you've been talking about it. And like, yeah. I think generally writes for like an hour, hour and a half and, Bro, uh, still like that, but it's like all the consistency, right? It's not even as much a matter of time, but like, like, let's say someone sits down and they're like, I have to do four hours and they can only do one day out of the seven because they get burnt out. Then that means it's too much time for them. So it's like, yeah. if you pull that back and then if you're doing one hour, bro, if someone can sit down and do one fucking hour every single day, that shit, man, I mean, you're going to have a first draft of a screenplay before you know it. That's all it is. In that book, it just came to mind, the Thomas Lennon, the comedian book, where he said making movie, writing movies for fun and profit. Yeah. How he made a billion dollars at the box office. Yeah. Him and his writing partner that made Reno 911 and Night at the Museum and all those comedies. Sounds like, honestly, they're just like writing a lot. Him and his, him and his partner. Sounds like they're just like crushing it and not making that big. They kind of just didn't overcomplicate things. Love the Hollywood experience. Love just going to a bar yeah right a ton like a lot of people make fun of that shit they're like oh you're just another writer at starbucks like it's like no, kind of embrace it but actually do it and don't brag about it all the time and like yeah. like the habit will be good so anyway yeah dude, um, writing at starbucks is the most cliche fucking thing in the world but every morning i'm there at starbucks and i'm like what else are you gonna do like that's the only i love seeing that that you do that yeah thanks bro it's like it I feel I bro, I've got the clarity now after like a week and a half or two weeks of doing this that I truly, truly believe if you're an actor or director or producer or writer, especially, this is the best fucking thing you can do for your career. I think I think for an actor, too, honestly, I saw something today on this acting school that's very prestigious, but they're kind of corny. I've since realized their Instagram, it was like, what can I do every day to improve? I know I'm not gonna give the name. It's like, yeah. what can I do every day to improve my acting? And it was like, it was the most vague advice. It was like stuff that like, yes, technically maybe it makes you a better actor. I see where they're coming from, but it, I could think of much better answers. It was like, show up for your friends, be a loving human being, <laughs> watch, watch movies, yeah. try hard in life, all yeah. that stuff, which like, Yes, being the point is being a human being that has yeah. a real life and like has goals and stuff. No shit, it makes you more 
more interesting person, but there are literal things you can do to be a better actor, like genuinely memorizing scenes and then figuring out how to like make them the best, comparing them to other people doing it. You know, you can go down the list. So anyway, well, you, um, that is it, so, yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into this. Um, I think we can come up with some good stuff. So are you going to open up final cut, final draft next to your script to write? Or should I just, do, I'll, I'll be the transcriber here, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so I got, I got final, final draft. draft out. And um, yeah, because I already started screenplay format on it. I didn't just start with post-it notes or whatever you crazy writers might uh, use for brainstorming. Post-it notes. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Flashcard. That's what Bob McKee says to use flashcards. Um, so anyway, bro, uh, I'll, I'll give you the brief. No, you know what? I'll just read it out loud if you don't mind. It's, it's not even one page yet. All right. So at this point, our short film, I want to do with Laura, me and her starring. It's called No Way Out. And I say in parentheses, the first thing about this could be based off a of Reddit forum where the main girl replies from uh, what people, so basically, um, she doesn't know what to do when her necklace gets stolen from her car. Okay. And so we open the screenplay with, there's likes popping up on a girl's phone. It's Sage Menendez. What a name. Studying a video. She's just posted to TikTok. The video rolls over and over of her. It's of Sage in front of a house with her boyfriend, Dak Remy. That'd be me. And the question poses, so she says, uh, you know, it could even be the TikTok like voice. The By the way, not to interrupt, Dak and Sage yep. are the most TikTok names I've heard. So you're spot Good on. observation. Good observation. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so the thing comes up. The, peop the people who live in this house stole my necklace out of my car. Should I get it back? The video is blowing up right before our eyes. Comments pouring in saying, why don't you go to the authorities? You see Sage replying. We did a month ago and they did nothing. Dak walks into the room in real time. Sage has a knife next to her. She's nervous. Dak says, you have a guard for that thing, don't you? Sage says, this? Uh, why would I have a guard for a kitchen knife? She holds up the knife with a rope next to it. Can you hand me a cloth from the kitchen? I I'm, I'm just going to wrap it. Dak steps into the kitchen, brings out a cloth. We better not have to use that. I can't believe we have to deal with this shit. So anyway, that's it. You can't tell. I'm circling around this idea that this girl, played by Laura, has something stolen out of her car. I don't know if a necklace is enough of an impetus for her to maybe... I think it go is. Go rob the house. Go rob the house of the people. Like, go get the necklace back. And because she goes to law enforcement, they don't do anything, which is actually a very topical thing in L.A. right now. Apparently, if you do a nonviolent crime, you only go to jail for like three years most. So a lot of crimes are happening. She finds out where it's from. She puts it on TikTok. People are like, why the fuck don't you go to law enforcement? And so her, her boyfriend is going to help her. She's already big on TikTok. They're big on TikTok. And it's figuring out what to do. And I don't know if in the short film we depict them actually going back and trying to take the stuff back or if it's all set up or what it might be. But that's where we're at. So I love the idea. Okay. Um, I think because we're always talking about like how to drive the or nowadays we're talking about how to drive this to a feature. Yeah. Yes. So if do you want some of my because like I don't want to pitch unless you want me to pitch. Literally, I can change everything about it. Pitch everything. Not, if we bro, accomplish it's, nothing, it's, that's fine too. Bro, it's strictly building off of it as in like how can we make it like a longer form thing? What's interesting about it to me, I had this idea that um I wanted to do for a long time. And I feel like the form of this could kind of follow a similar thing. I feel like if we were to make it into a feature, if we were to look at it as like a one night thing, like all yeah. of this shit takes place over one night and it just gets worse and worse and more and yeah. more fucked up. I love how it starts. I think starting out like straight in the middle of the action there of where they're like, going off to commit this crime and like shit could go horribly wrong whether it's like a murder or whatever is crazy and maybe originally their intent could be like we just want to scare them and then shit get goes really bad like maybe they try to defend themselves and then they start going in for the kill but um i want to share with you my idea because maybe they can intersect in a way 
the concept that I had uh, that is different, which maybe it can meld, is it was called the leash. And it's about a device. Like, you know how in Saw, it's like they have all those devices, like the bear yep. trap and like all that yep. stuff. In my, in this plot, it was a guy who had created this, um, this uh, device called, that he calls the leash, where essentially it's like barbs that connect, that go around your neck. And then it's like, it looks like a leash that he's holding and it's like a clicking device. So if he, every time he clicks it, the barbs go in tighter and tighter and tighter until eventually it'll completely decapitate the person. And so in my idea, the person who is on the leash has to take video of like everything that's happening. And it's basically like a one night thing where he goes on his total murder spree. He goes, this is fucking crazy. And I'm not saying incorporate all of it, but like he goes into a gym and like shoots up everyone in the gym and the guy's there like filming the thing. And then eventually at the end, he like cuts his head off with the leash. But the reason I bring that up is because I think the form of like a one night thing like that and like the video quality of it could be a really interesting uh, feature. So maybe even like the boyfriend being forced to film the girl rob the place back or something. Yeah, like like maybe. Yeah. And I like that, too, how you maybe think the couple is originally together and it gives that switch up to where like the girl is the one who's in charge. And I could see Laura like flipping this switch there, too. Totally. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's an idea. Like, essentially, she could maybe have like, what if she had a perfectly crafted plan, like how they had like in. um Yeah. Columbine stuff. They had written every fucking thing out with where the pipe bombs were gonna be, where the, how right. to shoot everyone. Yeah, they had these journals filled with it, and maybe she could have written in this journal all of the specific details. And you're just a pawn in her game. One hundred percent. I mean, so far, like I kind of almost found attracted to the idea of the guy like thinks he's being like a helpful boyfriend, kind of, and is like, I something sort of nice about as like the writer i found out like the actual empathy of like why they feel stuck like i titled it no way out like they feel like there's no other choice for them other than like stealing this stuff back you know yeah, but i think but i feel like the no way out the true no way out can come later wherein like in the beginning when it comes to the necklace and stuff like it could be you know, it could be more like a joking kind of deal. Like, you know, how some TikToks are like, yo, like maybe we should do this thing, but it's kind of extreme. Like it could yeah. still kind of played off like, oh, they're just like fucking with these people. But a lot of people are watching because they're like, this is fucking crazy. Yeah, I think that's a good addition already is that they have to film the whole thing or something. The only concern that I have about this premise is just the fact of like from a production standpoint is just the post that would be involved as far as going to TikToks and stuff, all the that comments. stuff, the comments and all it that crossed stuff. my mind too. That dude, that's gotta be so easy in the scheme of things. Like, I mean, bro, I'm sure there are people that you could find that are like into that. Sh it's just not my wheelhouse. I don't know how you would do that. Fair, 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 fair. I, I think I could figure that out. Like, or I could figure out like who to talk to for that. No more than like a hundred bucks at the most. Uh, well, I mean, dude, look, there are all these fiber people. I think um, <laughs> it's true. Also, also, bro, so true. you know what? It's been done before too, which is cool. Like, there's lots of shit. Like that one. Um, who's the biggest What's TikToker the big? besides like Charlie D'Amelio? Oh yeah, Addison Ray. Did you see that right. movie she was in? No, but I I think I heard that. I mean, it drew like 15 minutes, but in that 15 minutes, there were like all these comments that were swiping up. So like the fact is you can, that technology or whatever is out there that like, there's a way to do it. No, but yeah, I, I appreciate where your head's at though. I, I trust me that. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it's easy. bro. I trust you. If you think it's not a big deal. That's Production. Right. Um, that being said, I think, I think it's kind of a fun premise. I agree. I think we could go off on this. So, all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back on this. Uh, so you added already saying that maybe the boyfriend films the whole thing. Um, 
up, hold up, hold up. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna add to the screenplay right now. I suppose I'm just gonna put down the notes. Um, the BF films the whole thing. Dude, I just saw the best documentary I've ever seen the other day. My dad's friend showed him. Call. So I got to tell you about it, but uh, wait one second. So the BF films the whole thing. Um, what else? What other notes do you put out there? What if there's like, this is completely like an added idea, but like a device that she ends up putting on your neck as she calls the leash. I love it. Especially if it goes on TikTok or something. It, it, it's got to be badass. I think the one that you presented originally is a little close to Saw. Okay, fair. A little, if I, for the feature. If we're doing a feature, it's got to be completely original, obviously. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. uh, so it's creating muscles. I'm cool with that, bro. My dad would have a field day on this too. Right? He would just the wheels would start turning to come up with some type of interesting control mechanism. Uh, there has to be a- oh, bro, Here's the thing. This is, this kind of structure and form, we could make a feature that doesn't necessarily, I mean, it's trickier when you do it this way, but it could work where like, it doesn't have to be completely scripted with all 90 minutes we can keep oh, looser i agree you no know, we can the only fear with that is like i've done it a few times um it always ends up shorter a little bit like maybe we'll get to like 75 or 80 minutes and not that 90 <laughs> so we should just make sure that we have enough like at least description Agent. substance for it but bro i truly feel like i do understand if we want to make a short to like maybe help fundraising efforts or something i think it might just inspire honestly like I, i'm personally I, I know it's easy for me to say you make a short every week but i kind of am just itching to like write something and bring it to life yeah i feel that bro i feel it i mean i just want to make sure though like we make this thing and then it's for sure going to be like a straight line to that to the longer form thing you know i'm in man i i'm down to Put this and down and then keep developing it. Exactly. Like, even as we're thinking about, you know, going to production for a short and stuff, it's like. It's going to be fleshed out. Yeah. Really fleshing out the longer feature form. You well, know? let's you and me work on it then going forward. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, I'll come back to you with more stuff and then we'll like genuinely, we'll, we'll flesh it out. Cool. I mean, not, not spend too much. I don't like to spend too much time on this when I'm like meeting with someone else but just even whether it's you know you and i facetiming let's uh just give each other notes and stuff yeah totally i think this podcast first of all is a really good meeting place since we do it weekly that's and we can always come back to base um i would also ask if you can here's the thing bro so mm. willing and so down to help develop and create and all that stuff but i would ask if you can run point as in starting with your baby as in you bringing to me for this stuff only because like i know no, i agree be, i just want to be realistic with like what i know i can provide and it's like i can't i can't be do the like, heavy lifting with the, the, the writing. writing yeah, yeah. i uh no 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 that's makes sense with you to, i appreciate you communicating that um of course bro but dude it's a dope idea and um yeah yeah, yeah, see, yeah, yeah. see how we continue to develop was there anything else? So the boyfriend is going to film it. Maybe there's some type of control mechanism. She's got a chain on him or whatever on his neck, what have you. She's, she knows every detail of this night down to like the very time of how. I like that. She has it down to a science. That's going to make it much more interesting how she does it. She's very calculating. And what that does too is it provides you a plot structure because... It, Ocean's Eleven style. Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. And, and which, you know, in a spooky way, but that is spooky if she has it down that much to a science. Exactly. Gonna... Exactly. I love Oceans. She's calculating. And uh, that moment with the fountain gives me chills every time. Doesn't matter. Flying flying flying. Flying to, uh, there was some of that Oceans vibe in the Vegas movie, bro. 
Oh, totally right. Seven days of Eve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was that Michael Mann who directed that, or no? It was Steven Soderbergh, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. With that name out. Uh, he's done a lot of good shit. It's crazy. I have it done. He's done some bad stuff too, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it deserves to be noted. Yes. Uh, Okay, so that's fun. The fact that she's like so maniacal, intense about it. So you think it's enough that she had like her mom's favorite necklace or something stolen from her out of her car, maybe? Dude, the thing is, that's not her. I mean, that's only her way of getting him and getting into the action. It can Mm. be the most bullshit excuse of all time. It doesn't have to actually mean something to her. And she could also have she could also have planted something like it also could have potentially it, it's probably better if it wasn't actually stolen by these people like okay you know it's just a cover-up just need an excuse and i think the tiktok thing makes it like topical relevant the fact that she posted tiktok and people can't necessarily disagree with her and maybe it doesn't get like flagged for like three weeks i don't know what do you think yeah for starters yeah also bro i fucking love one takes how do you feel about this being a one take as in do it you're recording like you and her or whatever or maybe just you are recording on your phone so we have the two angles it's that but then it's also the i mean i love how we've done that before and it works um the tricky thing is we might need two cameras now that i'm thinking of it like if we have two angles but i mean bro the the fucking dance of that shit is like so complex we can maybe break it in a few sections like maybe we i have think it's more worth us. i think it's worth doing kind of what we did before in the birdman method which is making it look like one yeah, take agreed right yeah okay so that's we're gonna make it look like one take. and by the way i did another movie the buddy that was a night in the life of a fraternity party that went crazy i'm excited for it to come out uh and it was the same type of thing they shot it like it's so it looks like euphoria kind of cool. at one take type thing but they didn't do it in one take they they shot way too many takes in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's kind well, of bro, cool. do you know what that does for you though knowing that it should look even though we're not going to shoot it like it knowing that it's going to be a one take that puts constraints on you on the writing side of it that's actually helpful because you then know that like okay if this is going to be 90 minutes and we start going into this house you can't have them go like all the way on the other side of town or like another fucking state over it's like it it creates these confines so like what's next to the house what's what's close to them like you know what i mean i envision this whole thing i think i naturally think like that i like stuff it's kind of like a play, like it's already in like one location, sort of. I just naturally think of like cost effective. Bro. I don't want to do a bunch of locations here, you know, even if it's more cinematic, or whatever. It's like, just get to the point. The first film that I shot, which actually it's steadily moving on in post, incredible and great experience. <laughs> However, like 18, I might be exaggerating, like 16 locations. And there was one day that we went, I think like nine location jumps. So you really get a sense of like less locations on a low budget is ideal. Totally. I mean, we, Seven Days of Vegas, my dad's movie, we had a horrible time, even though it turned out good. And he wanted to have the time of our lives as a family making this movie. We ended up getting to have that time basically on the Duke of the Valley pilot that we did. Because there's only three locations a block away from each other he got to direct it and it was just, you know, we got to work the comedy. We got to do whatever we wanted. So yeah. it was a dream. And Bro, was, Vegas, yeah. what, like, I want some behind the scenes. Like, what were you doing? Were you on, on set? Seven days of Vegas? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I appreciate that you bring that up. Um, I was on set. I got to be my dad's assistant, which was a big opportunity for me. I'd never really seen like a big feature set before. And, you know, I, so I was, getting all those opportunities a lot of times people aren't even allowed like around the actors and stuff and uh 
you know, the director that my dad hired kind of didn't believe yeah. in the vision. It turned out he kind of just knew what to say in the beginning to get the job. Ugh. And, uh, you know, he's an actor and stuff. And then at the end of the day, he just kind of turned on any Van Patten and didn't, you know, felt like a power struggle. So he'd have these tough things. And anytime my dad would want something from the script captured, he'd kind of have a problem with it, be passive aggressive, be like, and so I was, it was a lot of me kind of actually like, just being there for my dad and my, you know, my uncle, my stepmom, and like kind of just trying to therapeutically like tell them that all is well, like keep taking the high road and kind of emotionally supporting a little bit. Yeah. I ended up really appreciating it. Oh, that's a really fucking hard thing. And mad props to your dad, also to you for like being through that shit and being there for them. But seriously, bro, mass props to your mad props to your dad. Cause here's the deal muscling through that shit is like, you're being coming out on the other side of that and then it being the film that it became that they're proud of 100 percent. it's like bro in life and especially in film as you're making something creative and you have to collaborate with people shit like that happens and people aren't going to be on the same wavelength and they're going to seem completely out of reality and like it, you have to work with difficult personalities sometimes and like if you're able to navigate that <laughs> if you're able to navigate that excuse me it's like bro you come out on the other side knowing how to navigate it because going in it's like obviously different situations you don't know how to deal but the more of these fucked up personalities and situations that you muscle through the stronger of a creator and like a person you become so totally. I, I and i'm sure you've already encountered like personalities that don't match yes yours. But I mean, it's a different situation. Like, it's like a whole other ball game. The fact that your dad, like my shit doesn't cost money. You know what I mean? It like, or minimal. And like for your dad to have like money tied up in that thing, it being this, like his baby, his baby. The feature, he's been working with it, massaging it for fucking years. And then all of a sudden the director is starting to derail shit and you, you can't even fucking communicate with them. It's yeah. like, bro, the amount of frustration to having to go through that shit but if you're able to make it on the other side it's like i'm pretty impressed that my like him and the rest of my family are able to keep finding new things to be excited about in the film industry because they've been burned so many times but dude it comes with having a long career it really does your friends in hollywood ben affleck said are the ones that stab you in the chest <laughs> <laughs> and like Honestly, for my dad and stuff, like even making a movie that they're proud of, that their stamp of approval is on, is amazing. You know, like a lot of people don't ever make a movie that's worth watching. It's tough to make a movie. It, it's it's the hardest thing in the world. You not only released it, which I haven't even fucking done, but you <laughs> release a great film. That is a fucking miracle, bro. That's crazy. Kind of a miracle. I know. People can't do it. So anyway, a uh, brief side note, this guy showed my dad and I his documentary that he did on the paddle tennis yeah. world. My dad was a pro tennis player. And then he also played paddle tennis at Venice Beach, which is like a smaller version of tennis. But it's it's even more fun and everything for, you know, my dad was like the world champion of it for like five years. And this guy made this documentary on the characters down at Venice Beach who are essentially just like glorified convicts you know they're all like one foot yeah. in and out of jail and they yeah. kept playing with like country club people ex-tennis pros and there's these championships and everything and there's no money in it and it's a passion project. this guy made this documentary on it the documentary is kind of like best in show by christopher guest documenting all the ridiculous characters and stuff it's uh -huh. so good i'm fascinated what's going to happen to it. i hope he's submitting it to sundance and stuff so it's not released yet you guys got like an early Please. okay yeah cool um I, I feel like it's just noteworthy because this guy did make something. And I'm like, what's his background? Is that this documentarian? He's a sketch comedy guy and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dude, Man. that's dope. That's fucking dope. Uh, it's really exciting when like something is like they haven't released it yet, but you've seen it and it's really fire. And like they haven't found distribution because you never know what that's going to become. That's how I felt about Saw and The Conjuring. That being said, have you started watching this new Game of Thrones, uh, House of Dragons? have not i do were you a fan of game of thrones the first one i saw one episode 
<laughs> Why am I surprised? Bro, you want to know the one, the one that I saw, which I heard is like one of the most epic episodes that I sure. could see. It's it's in the last season where like all the I think they're called white, white walkers. walkers. Yeah, they're all like charging, and it's that whole fucking thing. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Yeah, that's the one I saw. Did she end up like killing them? I don't even remember. I just remember. Probably. I don't blame you. So for what it's worth, I didn't actually love Game of Thrones either. And I actually find it mind blowing that you watched just one episode. I, I kind of love that because I thought it would be a, a pretty boring show personally. That like it was literally just a bunch of people saying like, oh, we're going to show people from medieval times and fantasy, but doing a lot of shocking things like having sex all the time crazy not your little niece's fairy tale story <laughs> right. so it was crazy and like i feel like that's already been done so many times yeah that, like, the fact that it was hailed as high art with game of thrones right. i just called bullshit i was like no but i still appreciate it it was like a cultural phenomenon and yeah. like to watch it just because everyone else did that being said this new show house of dragons the reviews are out it's considered like pretty good and just solid, not, not reinventing the wheel. I find it very fun. I find it very entertaining, simple, to the point, giving the audience what they want, but not what they expect. And I think it's good storytelling. You turned me on to the Obi-Wan, like the first episode or whatever. Which I, I like the first like two episodes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I watched the first one and it was mind blowing, bro. Because I hadn't, I've watched one Star Wars movie in my life when I was like 10. And uh, again, and it's been like fucking 15, 20 years since I've seen that. And the beginning of that episode, they had the recap, like the three minute recap, which literally, bro, all of those shots together must have cost millions of dollars to pull off. It was the most visually stunning shit. I've. And bro, I also thought like that recap was going to be how the whole fucking pilot was going to be. I was like fucking hooked. Like this shit is crazy. Drawn in. Yeah. You been watching anything interesting? No, no Rex. I'll come back next week with some. You've been writing too much. Been writing, bro. Just creating. No time to consume. I love it. I love it. Putting it out. Dude, I love this TikTok idea. And let's keep developing. Hey, man. Come come to the next one with like if you flesh it out a little more, like let's dig in more, bro. I'm excited. Sounds good to me. I will. I uh, I think the hard part's done. I, I kind of zeroed in on the idea. 100%. Good yeah, shit. and I, I appreciate you giving me some uh, some fun stuff to work with. So. Oh, yeah, bro. What's going to be dope is, like, this is the premiere episode of the shit. Like, if this actually becomes a huge... When it becomes a huge feature yep. that's out in the universe... Why not? The first episode... Bro, we're, like, we're just creating it. Like, you just had that one page. Imagine if it blows up. This is huge. What happens, baby? Yes, sir. All right, my man. This has been great. Yes, man. Till next week. Sounds great, brother. Have a great right. week. Take care, bro. Bye.